Based on the book by Dmitry Glakovsky, the Metro series was originally published by THQ, but developed by 4A, which is a Ukrainian games developer made up of employees which had previously worked on the Stalker franchise. With the 4A's production history and shared experience of the Soviet Union's fall, the team up with Glaskovsky seemed like a perfect match. The result was one of the most atmospheric experiences of the era, mired by poor gameplay systems and lackluster AI. One year after its sequel, Metro Last Light, was released, both Metro 2033 and Last Light were remastered and brought to the 8th generation of consoles. This remaster not only gave the rapidly aging 2033 a much needed lick of paint, it also provided enough attraction to players who may have missed the title initially. Metro 2033 takes place 20 years after a nuclear conflict. The setting of post-apocalyptic Moscow really leads into the game's strongest asset, the atmosphere. From the dark, claustrophobic metro tunnels to the bleak surface areas, this game oozes atmosphere. The world building is excellent, and the improved transitions of Redux has only improved on the original by cutting loading times and improving immersion. This isn't the only improvement Redux has made. Voices have been redubbed and gun audio has more oomph. However, lighting improvements are a little bit hit and miss for me. While the world is far more visible, it also cuts some of the attention and mystery from the Metro segments. Cutscenes have also been modified in an effort to maintain your first person perspective. While it does get rid of some admittedly awkward camera angles of the original game, it also cuts some of the animation, making the characters feel stiff at times. Ultimately, I do feel that the new additions added to the experience and make Redux a wiser purchase than trying to hunt down the original. The aesthetic. While Metro Redux may not have the best graphics, the world is beautiful. Lighting doesn't only add to the atmosphere, it also heightens the tension in the grey and bleak metro. The apocalyptic nature of the environments is expertly crafted, even extending into the open world where disheveled buildings and littered corpses remind us of the dangers around. The creatures also deserve a special note here, as they are much greedier than most of the mutant creatures in other apocalyptic games. Some of the Fallout creatures even look cartoony by comparison. Music is also solid, and while not quite up to the quality of Fallout 3, the music here masterfully adds to the tension. The updated gun sounds are punchy, adding much needed oomph while environment sounds keep your head on a swivel, while expertly worrying you about about what lies ahead. The gameplay. Unfortunately, the gameplay is still the weakest part of the game. While the gunplay is fine, the repetitive nature of combat slowly strips any tension you may have had in the earlier levels. The game can be broken down into three types of engagement, stealth, explore, and a wave section. While these are fundamentally fine, the game tends to repeat them in that exact order over and over, while waves become increasingly absurd. The AI doesn't seem to have much improvement here either, as they mostly steamroll towards you, often ignoring any companions you might have. The thing that sucks most about this is that the mechanics of some of the enemies in this game are genius. One type of enemy won't attack you while you face it from a reasonable distance, while another will be hurt and even driven off by your flashlight. The demons, a gargoyle type creature, despite being extremely irritating at times, will either have you running from cover to cover or expending needless amounts of ammo to down, making for extremely tense moments. This variety allows you to choose how to engage enemies, at least until it's ripped away from you every wave section, which only use the steamroll enemies I mentioned before. Non-human enemies are bullet sponges and require headshots, while being far too agile to net you more than a couple lucky shots. While this does add to the survival tension, 
The only way to survive some of these wave segments is to kite the enemies into your companion's crossfire, which breaks immersion. Using military rounds can be effective, but then you have to weigh the risk of literally shooting money. And while this also adds to the immersive inventory management, in hindsight I should have used my throwable munitions more. The difficulty is also worthy of note. Enemies drop faster on Ranger difficulty than on some of the easier difficulties. The challenge here comes from resource management, and while it's ultimately the reason why I rage quit the game, it wasn't the lack of bullets that frustrated me. On survival mode, particularly Ranger difficulty, you'll burn through air filters faster than a pack-a-day smoker. You literally have to change that sucker every 5 minutes IRL time. While the quality of filters may have dropped in the post-apocalypse, the shortest amount of time I could find for IRL filters they would have likely used is 45 minutes, with a mil spec lasting you over 40 hours. It can also feel cheap when you pick up a visually full bandolier of slugs, only to get a couple of bullets. Movement is also interesting. Dainty spiderwebs slow the character to a snail's pace. While easily dispensed by a lighter, I was hoping for a tense chase sequence that forced the player to fumble from guns to lighter in order to escape. The closest segment to this involves the enemy's weak to light I mentioned earlier. It's set in sewer type tunnels, but the mechanical issues that the game has doesn't allow it to be as tense as I was hoping. Despite my annoyance, I would still recommend playing Metro Redux on survival mode, Ranger difficulty. It feels the best combat wise and immerses you the most in the survival elements. Just make sure you check everywhere for ammo and filters. The story. Metro 2033's story is solid. While it may not be the best of all time, the transition of a third person perspective to a first person shooter made for a strong narrative. I also like how you can choose how to end the game, as the novel and the game are primarily about xenophobia, and you ultimately choose the fate of a largely unknown and misunderstood adversary. The greatest weakness is the liberties that was likely taken in the combat segments, but ultimately it's world building and quality of characters outclass most games. But after saying all this, how well does Metro Redux do on the A scale? Accessibility. Metro 2033 is reasonably accessible. The game has subtitles throughout, and while I neglected to mention it in previous titles, this game comes with seven different flavors of dialogue and ten languages of text. There are also a variety of difficulty settings and two game modes that allow for a wide variety of people to play the game the way they want. Convenience. Metro Redux is available digitally on Steam, GOG, and Epic. It's also available for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Switch. The title has a decent assortment of settings and even includes a benchmarking tool in the program files on the PC version. There are still some bugs in this title though, but most of them are visual or animation glitches that won't affect your overall gameplay. The only notable glitches I found was a weird ladder glitch that slowed the player to a snail's pace. The other was probably an intentional glitch with a machine gun that prevents you from spamming it during one of its segments. There's also a weird crashing issue I found on the PlayStation 4 version from when the game first came out, but this has likely been patched in the near decade since launch. Experience. The only games I can think of that manages a similar level of atmosphere to Metro Redux are Bioshock and the beginning segments of Bioshock Infinite. Redux is the best at atmosphere at times, but the gameplay is where this title falls short. The repetitive nature of combat and cheap feeling of its difficulties can be a hard sell for some people. The story, while allowing for plot armor and common tropes, 
provides for the most interesting narration and storytelling of a title I can think of. The foreign perspective is refreshing and current world events aside provides a unique process of a post-Soviet mindset. So of don't play, avoid, meh, decent and must play, where does Metro Redux fall? Must play. Retro 2033 is not a perfect game. While gameplay is its largest flaw to a point where it's counterproductive to its strengths, different difficulty settings or more tactful resource management could have saved me from the frustration I encountered from the game. The world 4A crafted is a shining example to apocalyptic and horror games alike. The story is also engaging and refreshing, replacing the all too common dude bro war glorification of western first person shooters with a grittier world of unknown enemies and questionable motives. Ultimately, I think the positives of Metro 2033 Redux outweigh the negatives I encountered, making it a must play. If you like the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe check out one of the other videos. If you didn't, feel free to comment. Let me know what I did wrong. I'm all more than open to suggestions. Either way, I'll see you there. Bye.